I, for one, was rather chuffed that the man with the hat had met his swift death in front of my own very eyes. For starters, his voice had become somewhat bothersome for the throat. But even more importantly than that, his absence meant I got to embark on the Berlin adventure alone. I opted to travel upon an easy jet flight, for while their logo and color branding may be far less aesthetically appealing than Ryanair's, it was this competing company's mistake by downsizing their passengers' free carry-on allowance, forcing innocent travelers to purchase larger luggage options, which at times cost more than the actual flight itself. Boo to Ryanair, and yay to EasyJet! So I was off, and one quick hop and a jump later, I had arrived in Berlin. What could possibly go wrong? Hello? Hello? Hi there! <laughs> Did somebody take too many drugs in Berlin? <laughs> Loads of drugs in Berlin. <laughs> I knew it! You had that drug face look all over your face. Ah, <laughs> don't worry about it. In a few days you'll feel your normal self again. You don't understand. There was something else. I, I saw something. <laughs> that sounds like the drugs again. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that. It was, it was something else. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me! I'm a very gullible person. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't even know where to start. Start from the start. I, for one, was rather chuffed that the man with the hat... Once upon a time, there was a dashingly good-looking but sloppily written character named Jared. Because they were all named Jared. His specific tale takes us to the exciting central hub of Germany's capital, Berlin. Famed for its speedy techno parties, endlessly talented displays of graffiti artwork, and, of course, the place where Hitler took his final breath before tearing his brain apart with a single bullet. Bang! However, for our protagonist, his intended mission was one of a far more distinct nature, and there was only one place in Jared's mind that would sufficiently instigate his Berlin quest. And that was to trawl through the wet grounds of Grunewald Forest all the way to the graveyard of the Nameless, for it is only here that one can pay their final respects to the bones of Nico, arguably the most influential female art rock singer in history, responsible for a slew of classic solo albums, as as well as, of course, the Velvet Underground's debut record, otherwise known as the greatest album ever made. Now at this cold German grave, Jared's mourning was dense and severe, and yet these agonizing moments were not to be the defining incidents of today's long journey. Rather, there was a presence of a different sort looming in the air. It took a moment or two, but up ahead, it was unmistakable what he saw. Oh God. It was the ghost of the man with the hat. A man Jared had watched huh? die with his own eyes. He was there. And just like that, all the important Nico praise was swiftly forgotten, as Jared did what any of us would do. He fled this forsaken scene. Turn the page out, please. Slightly shook but still reasonably intact, Jared moved to the next point on his list, Old St. Matthew's Churchyard. Among many reasons, this location was special as the only place where he could leave his love at the graves of the Brothers Grimm, those writing minds responsible for folklore literature so potent that it has stitched itself into the very fabric of global culture. For example, Cinderella, the Fog Prince, Hansel and Gretel, Rapunzel, Tim Beauty, and Snow White. No. But just as before, this expression of grief was rudely interrupted when that thing came again. The man with the hat. He was there. Naturally, Jared left as quickly as he had come. Yet stumble on that turn. Closing off the famous trilogy of artistic respects, Jared then went to offer a quick prayer at the Hasselhoff Museum, sucking up that manly Hoff air until, what's this? The man with the hat. He was there. 
So disturbed by these incessant visions he was, our handsome hero escaped to the only place he knew he could be safe, the Jewish memorial. Here, 2,711 concrete slabs stood as a shameful reminder of Germany's atrocious past by honoring those 6 million Jews who were exterminated during World War II. Surely, even the man with the hat wouldn't be so disrespectful as to interfere with the- Oh, no wait, he was there! Where do we draw the line? For it seemed that no matter how off limits a place may have been, the man with the hat was still sure to follow. The Brandenburg Gate? Look out! He was there! The Victory Column? Oh no! He was there! The East Side Gallery? He was there! The Stand By Me Tree in Tiergarten Park? He was there! The remains of the Berlin Wall? He was there! The Reichstag Building? He was there! Hansa Studios? He was there! The Ramones Museum? He was there! The Soviet War Memorial? He was there! 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 Even the traffic lights had started wearing bloody hats. It all got so predictable that even when hiding within the walls of his own hostel, every stair creak, every wall mumble, every door opening could only mean one thing. The end. What do you mean the end? That can't be the end. What happens next? I have no idea. I can't remember. Ah, <laughs> wait a minute. This sounds like those drugs again, you know. I mean, it's possible, I guess. Ah, well don't you worry either way. You're safe here with me now. Yeah. Where am I exactly? You're in Budapest, silly. Budapest? Why? Pff, I don't know, fuck, watch me dance. <laughs>